My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with a profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins, the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my God and Angel, intercede for me. Jesus, I am going to continue this dialogue with you, which I just started, by reading an excerpt from the Reader's Digest article. It is based on a real story in Canada, and it has relevance to my prayer with you as you, as you call us today to stay awake. The article described the following. The day had dawned crisp and clear, but early spring can be an unpredictable time on northern roads. Ernest Castell and his passengers will soon be stranded in their car, buried under a massive Manitoba storm. Exhaustion washed over Ernest Castell. Outside, the Manitoba snowstorm was still swirling, covering his Nissan SUV in a white blanket. For the past three nights, the 46-year-old addiction counselor and his five companions had huddled in the vehicle, their sole sanctuary from the minus 40 degrees Celsius weather. It wouldn't be a warm refuge for much longer. The gas had finally run out. Now, just 50 kilometers from the town of Leaf Rapids, but stranded on a snowbound northern Manitoba road, Castell's strength was ebbing. That morning, he and his brother, John, had left the safety of the SUV and set out on a rolling track for help. With no cell service available on the isolated road, they had to find another way to contact the outside world. They had trudged through the waist-deep snow for hours, searching for a communication tower they were sure was a few kilometers up from their service, uh, from their vehicle on the buried Provincial Road 391. They had eventually found the tower, which had a phone, allowing them to reach the RCMP. But by the time they had returned to the SUV to wait for the rescue, night was falling. The brothers crawled back inside, aching and soaked with sweat. For over an hour, Castell had sat, bundled in his parka, but still shivering. Well, he wasn't shivering anymore. That worried him. The body's core temperature drops. He shakes urgently, as if to fight to regain heat. If the shivering stops, that can mean the hypothermia is moving into a much more dangerous phase. Castell looked over to, at John, hunched in the passenger seat beside him. His brother wasn't shivering either. Outside the SUV windows, darkness loomed. It all seemed so peaceful, Castell thought and he was so sleepy. He fought to stay awake, knowing that sleeping while hypothermia raged on can be deadly. But his eyelids were so heavy. He knew that the only way to stay alive was to stay awake at all costs. He kept on encouraging the others, sometimes shouting at them, to do the same until they can be rescued. Eventually, the help arrived just in the nick of time and they were safely rescued. Lord, how important it was for Castell and his companions in that dangerous situation to stay awake, lest they fell asleep. Precisely Jesus, you remind us of this important lesson, both from human and spiritual aspects of our life. You said, Stay awake, for you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour of night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So too, you also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. Yes, Jesus, how important is the spirit of vigilance, of awakefulness, and of focus. We live in a society which is so prone to dispersion, distraction, and dissipation. When you turn on a computer, for instance, we approach it with a goal in mind to access the internet in order to search for an article I want to read, 
to do research on the project I'm working on, or to check my email, and so on. Well, soon afterward, either because of the distraction of the pop-up ads, or because of an idle curiosity, instead of doing what I'm supposed to do, I do something else, which has nothing to do with the initial purpose. Well, Jesus, I did not stay awake, that's for sure. I did not stay awake because instead of putting my mind and heart into what I'm supposed to do, I let the thief, as it were, to enter into my mind and heart, and let him take away my focus and purpose. The consequence of this is that I've lost the presence of God and ended up wasting time, which, according to St. Rosa Maria, is a treasure. Can I think about squandering something valuable, something which is precious and of great worth, just to go to waste? Well, by not staying awake, letting the thief of destruction get in the way, yes, I could easily do that. So, Jesus, what do you think? Do you think that I'm staying awake as I do my study, carry out my work and fulfill my duties? Do you think that I'm trying to live in your divine presence? Do you think, my Lord, that I'm, tr I'm trying, truly trying, to imitate Mary, the younger sister Martha, when you praised her by addressing both of them? Martha, Martha, you're anxious and troubled up many things. But one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. Yes, Jesus. Mary stayed entirely and thoroughly awake because her whole being was directed towards you. That one thing you are asking of us is that we should strive to stay awake in your divine presence as we carry out our ordinary tasks, duties, and responsibilities. That is one of the fundamental elements of how we can truly sanctify our work. Some time ago, Carl Newport, an assistant professor of computer science at Georgetown University, wrote a very interesting book with the title Deep Work, Rules for Focused Success in a Distracted World. One of his quotes caught my attention. He said, Deep work is so important that we might consider it, to use the fair phrasing of business writer Erica Barker, the superpower of the 21st century. Superpower of the 21st century. Wow, that's important. That's exciting too. Who would not want to possess such an ability, such a power? With this superpower, I can accomplish a lot. I can excel in my work and career, and I can also draw legitimate satisfaction and joy in having done a very good job. But on the other hand, if I did not stay awake, gave easily into this thief of distraction and dispersion, well, I cannot accomplish as much. I delay my work, and most likely it's not well done either, because it might be full of errors which have to be corrected or done all over again. Then I might experience the feeling of lethargy, annoyance, and dissatisfaction which are harmful. In such a circumstances, there is the danger of hypothermia taking over and causing me possibly grave harm. In the same vein, another author, Nicholas Carr, said the following in an article in The Atlantic. He said, Immersing myself in a book or a lengthy article used to be easy. My mind would get caught up in the narrative or the turns of the argument and I would spend hours strolling through long stretches of prose. That's rarely the case anymore. Now, my concentration often starts to drift after two or three pages. I get fidgety, lose the thread, begin looking for something else to do. I feel as if I'm always dragging my wayward brain back to the next. The deep reading that, I, that used to come naturally has become a struggle for me. Well, Jesus, here's a testimony of someone who struggled with the thief of distraction, of frequent interruptions, and loss of wakefulness. May this not be the case for any of us. So, Lord Jesus, help me to learn the habit of staying very much awake and plunge myself into the work that I am doing, or the tasks that I am accomplishing, and the responsibilities I am fulfilling. Jesus, help me to see the great supernatural value 
are living more intensely and constantly in your divine presence with a prayerful heart. That is how I'll stay awake and wait for you at any time for you to come into my house, my spiritual house. That is how, with your help, Jesus, I'll be able to sanctify and divinize my daily work. As I finish this short time of conversation with you, Jesus, once more I think about your work, life of work at Nazareth. I think about and contemplate the three of you, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, carrying out your personal work with total dedication, focus, and wakefulness, the deep presence of the Holy Trinity. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, help me to imitate your work habit so that I too can sanctify my daily work. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.